Hey there, welcome to First Five. If you're looking for encouragement, you came to the right place. Let's dive in. So are you familiar with the concept of a bottom line? Like a bottom line in companies and corporations and nonprofits, essentially a bottom line are is the net earnings of an organization. So after all expenses have been deducted from the revenue, the bottom line is the net earning, what they actually made after all the expenses have been taken out. And I think when we talk about bottom lines, it's important to understand that most companies operate off of the bottom line. The bottom line determines if the company can, can continue to stay open. The bottom line determines whether or not you know, a business can continue to prosper and thrive, whether they can pay their employees, whether they can meet payroll, whether they can, you know, pay for benefits. Like the bottom line is important to most, if not all organizations, because the bottom line determines whether or not this business is viable or not. And so when something comes and begins to mess with the bottom line, well, that creates a real issue. And I want to I look at something today in the scriptures that uh, really gets at the bottom line. Like what happens when God affects the bottom line? What happens when the force that disrupts an industry is God? I want you to take a look at this, looking at Acts 19. And I don't know if I've ever read it like this before, but I love being able to see it this way this time. Acts 19 verses 23 to 29. It says this, about that time, serious trouble developed in Ephesus concerning the way. This is the followers of Jesus, the, the, the way, that's what they were called. It began with Demetrius, a silversmith who had a, a large business manufacturing silver shrines of the Greek goddess Artemis. He kept many craftsmen busy. He called them together along with others employed in similar trades and addressed them as follows. Gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business, but as you have seen and heard, this man, Paul, has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all. And he's done this not only here in Ephesus, but throughout the entire province. Now, of course, I'm not just talking about the loss of public respect for our business. I'm also concerned that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will lose its influence and that Artemis, this magnificent goddess worshipped throughout the province of Asia and all around the world, will be robbed of her great prestige. At this, their anger boiled and they began shouting, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And soon the whole city was filled with confusion. Everyone rushed to the amphitheater, dragging along Gaius and Aristarchus, who were Paul's traveling companions from Massa. Don't you? And so what I want you to see here is that the bottom line of Demetrius's business is being affected because Paul is going out and preaching the gospel. Because Paul is take is making an intentional decision to tell people about who Jesus is, the bottom line of this silversmith's business is essentially being affected. It's ruining their wealth opportunities. It's ruining uh, their, their net earnings. It's making their business non-viable. What happens when God affects the bottom line? Well, that means that revival is among us. Whenever we begin to see God affect the culture at scale, we can begin to, to, to smell or sense the aroma of God. We can begin to, 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 to see the winds of change happening. We can begin to see that the bottom line is changing, not only of businesses, but of society. When God comes in, he affects culture at scale. When God enters into the heart of man, the heart of people, when he, when, he, when he takes up the space of people's hearts, their desires change. And when their desires change, their spending habits change. And when their spending habits change, that affects the economy. And that affects the things around us. You see, God, when he comes in, in power to change the human heart, he takes up room, he takes up space, he takes up resonance, and it changes culture at scale. This is the beautiful thing that I love about God is being able to see him enter a space and change an economy. <laughs> that quite literally because the hearts of men have been gripped and they've been changed and they've 
come into an understanding of who Jesus is through the ministry of Paul, that this business that was completely dedicated to building these shrines and building these statues in the image of Artemis, this false god, are now being torn down. Or this business is no longer sustainable. It's no longer viable. They can't afford to pay their employees. Why? Because God has moved in power. Because people have come to a revelation of who Jesus is and just how good he is and what he's done for us. He gave his life for us. Jesus gave his life for you. For all your sin, for all your messed upness, for all your jacked upness, Jesus gave his life for you. And when you come into an understanding of who Jesus is, it changes everything. It changes your core makeup. You don't visit the places that you used to visit. You don't frequent the places that you used to go. You don't hang out with the people you used to hang out with all the time. Things about you begin to change. Your personality begins to change. Your habits begin to change. Your spending habits begin to change. You, your, your even understanding of consumerism and life as a whole and materialism, it begins to change. You look different. You act different. You behave differently because Jesus has entered the space of your heart. He is coming for total life transformation. And so when God comes in, and affects the bottom line, not only of a business, but of society. What is society's net earnings? What do they get after everything else has been taken out? God. God is the bottom line. God is the bottom line of society, or at least he should be. And so I love being able to see just the love and the grace of God the love and the grace of Christ fill the hearts of men and watching as their lives are changed. My prayer is that we begin to see this in our day and in our time, that wherever you are, you would see the, the, the winds of change, the winds of revival coming, that the people around you would be changed from the ground up, from the inside out, that as their core makeup is being changed by God, Day by day, little by little, their habits would change. The places they frequent would change. Industries would change. The world would change. It would become a more loving place, a more caring place, a place where we care about our brothers and sisters, a place where justice overflows in the streets, a place where love and care and grace are paramount in our society, a place where joy is abundant, a place that looks a lot more like heaven on earth as it is in heaven is what we pray. When God affects the bottom line, he changes everything. When he affects the bottom line of our hearts, what, what is our net earning? It's, it's him. My prayer is that we begin to see more and more of the bottom line being affected. I'm not just talking about financials, I'm talking about your heart. I'm talking about society. I'm talking about the world. I really hope that this encouraged you today. If nothing else gave you a different perspective on the scriptures, but I hope it encouraged you and we'll talk soon.